Now we know all the big ticket items that were changed within the winter update, forge, matchmaking, CSR, weapon updates, and stuff like that. But there were actually a lot of extra changes that went into the winter update that were never mentioned until the day of the patch. And so I wanted to bring up the 15 hidden changes that you might have not known that happened. And it looks like there's like a back end update for cross core customization. So if you guys like these informative videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. And if you want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. First, let's start off with the hidden multiplayer changes, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be very interested on. Uh, these are not really in, uh, organized in any kind of particular order. These are all just kind of like what's on the page right here. The first one I'm going to mention is that the firing of the disruptor will now correctly uncloak players using the active camo, which seems like a really important thing to be able to do. If you're putting damage in a camo player, you should decloak them, I guess is the way to put it. So that's a really important switch right there. Uh, another one, spawn points on multiplayer map catalysts have been adjusted to reduce instances of players respawning in an enemy player's line of sight. I definitely experienced this, especially in SWAT. It could be uh, quite interesting to see what happens. Dead. I just got killed in here, bro! Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> the volatile skewers projectile will now be launched in man cannons like the base skewers projectile is, which I know it's not like a huge change, but it's something you would expect to have with a skewer shooting basically the same projectile, having the same physics. For some reason it didn't, but now it does, which these are super rewarding shots. I mean, if you guys pull it off, let me know in the comment section down below because those things are really freaking cool. There were a ton of minor changes made to the visuals of the multiplayer, but I think the biggest one that they changed was saying that the windshield tint of the Space Station Gaming Warhog coating has been adjusted so that players in the driver and passenger seats are more visible to other players. I even saw people mention that this was like a pay to win almost kind of a coding because of that windshield of the Space Station Gaming Warthog is actually kind of tough to see through. Uh, but I couldn't imagine it being a pay to win kind of advantage, really. I mean, that's I, I saw some people getting mad about that. I thought they're maybe got a little too far in the whole thing. But uh, let me know if you guys felt that same way. But I think this is a good thing to make that change. So uh, I do think it was a little difficult to actually see them, but definitely not a pay to win thing. Uh, the audio was actually changed as well, saying multiple Eratus AI voice lines have been added for kills with kinetic, plasma, hard light, and shock weapons. Eratus is one of my favorite AIs, so I'm glad to see he got more content added into the game to hear some more wacky weirdness coming from him. A really great quality of life improvement for the multiplayer in the menus here, saying that the challenges listed on the pause menu during the multiplayer matches will now show their correct XP values, which is great to know just so then I can like, prioritize properly of which challenges I should be going after within the same match. Another great thing though, I know a lot of people are talking about we have Forge coming in, but like custom games are kind of busted right now. Well, looks like they're a little less busted, I guess is the way to say it, where they made a big change saying that using a save a copy shortcut in the custom game editor menu will now save all currently applied but unsaved changes to the new copy. You can actually save game modes now when it comes to custom games. Crazy to think about that. Glad that well, change was made. That was super important and really annoying for all the custom game community out there. Challenges and medals certainly changed as well. A good quality of life one saying kills will now more consistently track for weapon specific challenges. I remember having this happen as well, where I would play the game and then say like I needed to get like three battle rifle kills. I got I, and I got like five of them or something like that, and only like two tracked. I've definitely had this happen. So I'm glad to see that. That was bug. That bug was like there's a huge quality of life improvement right there. Glad to see that got addressed. Here's an extra little hidden change that involves cross core customization. I want to thank uh, Attack on Titan R for showcasing this to me on Twitter. Here, if you guys are not following me on Twitter, well, you definitely should. Link in the description down below. So you might want to cover this in a video. It looks like we have some cross core customization now for the bots, saying there are now. Cross core bots appearing with mixed helmets, helmet attachments, and knee pads in Halo Infinite. I mean, man, it, like you see here with the Mark 7 helmet with the Mark 5 body right there. Then we move over, we have like the Tenrai uh, Yoroi set, right, with the Mark 7 helmet right here. This could just be more of a bug, but it, if it's a bug, you think it may be some way 
be compatible with different ways to be able to represent your Spartan. It'd be interesting to see how this actually came about to be, but very interesting to see nonetheless. And man, it always just seems like the bots get to play with all the cool stuff before the players do. But hey, you know, bots got bots had a chance to have three knives on their character. Now we had three knives ability with this seasonal update. So hopefully we get that as well very soon when it comes to Halo Infinite. This might be one of those like back ends, one step closer kind of things to gain like that true cross core customization that I know we've been all hoping for for the longest time. With campaign co-op coming into the game, a lot of people are going to be jumping back in, myself included. Actually on my stream, I jumped in, I played with a former developer of the campaigns. We kind of went, walked through some of his iterations of the levels and talked about like what he was working with what the inspiration was for a lot of the bases that we did i'm looking to cut that up into like a cool short video guys for you guys to check out here on the channel who can't catch those live streams but if you want to catch my live stream link in the description down below guys we stream every tuesday and thursday at 8 p.m pacific standard time the important in-game menu stuff that was changed right here pretty saying previously enabled skulls no longer have a chance to become disabled after resuming a save file with the continue button in a campaign menu, which again, you, when you select your skulls and you want those on, you kind of want those to stay on. So that's great to see that was fixed up right there. And then I want to say all weapon variants are now correctly labeled in FOB tab at the tag map. Again, good quality of life improvement. When I select on something, I actually want it to be what it is. So yeah, you definitely want that to be happening for sure. Uh, access to the screen calibration menu during campaign gameplay has been restored. This is actually really beneficial to me. When I first started playing the co-op campaign the other night, I was like, this is really dark for some reason. And it'd be really annoying to drag your friends from the game, go back to the menu, let me calibrate my screen, then jump back in. Glad to see that was changed. Really like that feature. Talking about visuals, we're actually kind of on that topic right there. Then character facial animations now appear smoother at all frame rates, which this definitely happened. I'm so happy about this. It's like a, sounds like a minor change, but the whole idea about the campaign is that you kind of immerse yourself into an environment. And when you see like this disconnected, like say like 60 frame animations, but then like the facial animations were running at 30, it was really weird. And it's kind of like took you out, made you feel like you're playing a video game again. Well, now the update that I was playing 144 frames, and the frame animations for the face were at 144 frames. It was fantastic. I love that. And then also, this might be a little bit more of an audio uh, glitch right here, but uh, they said right here that the Grunt Birthday Party Skull will now only trigger confetti effects when a headshot kill on a, is made on a Grunt, which I like that a lot. That's one thing I actually kind of disliked about the Grunt Birthday Skull is that like it's just like everything you killed was yay, fantastic. So. Really happy about that change. Uh, some achievements that were not triggering properly are now supposed to be triggering. Like the Headmaster achievement will now unlock consistently and the It Really Does Beat Everything achievement will now consistently unlock if your requirements are met. The head of Microsoft Studios recently said that they're basically just not happy with how Halo Infinite is performing. And I talked about that in a video in great detail. If you want to know about it, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.